This all started a couple years ago at Christmas when y'all needed space for turkeys, right? Exactly. Well, actually, it was Thanksgiving. Um, we needed to store our turkeys for a week before the actual giveaway. And I called Kyle Newton to see if he had a space, thinking that it was going to be at the old McDuffie High School. And he didn't have that, but he had this. And so as we are really trying to grow the food share program and totally out of space at the AIM campus, um, I reached back out to Kyle and said, would the school district consider allowing us to use this facility? And he got with the powers that be and got back with me and said, absolutely. There's some safety issues that have to be addressed. And of course, we needed to change the freezer to a refrigerator. Um, but once that was done, um, next week we will be dispersing our food share program out of this building. And you have loading docks here, you have everything you need here, right? Absolutely. We'll have a forklift that will take the produce off the truck because this bay is a little smaller than trucks are today. Um, but we'll have the capacity to take a forklift, get it off, um, put it on the dock, and roll it into a refrigeration unit. And for people who are not familiar with the Food Share program, tell them what that is. Um, food Share is a program to get fresh fruits and vegetables to all people. So any of us can buy a box for $20. Really has a value of much more than that. But anyone that receives SNAP benefits can buy that same box. Anyone that has SNAP benefits can buy that exact same box for $5. And so it really helps um, lower income families have access to healthy foods. So at AIM, we're not just concerned, concerned about food insecurity, but we're concerned about making sure people have healthy food. And how can the community help y'all? Um, just um, support our programs. Um, you can buy a box and donate it to a family that maybe can't afford it. Um, come and check us out. Come do a tour at AIM and find out all that's going on. So behind me is what used to be kind of the centralized kitchen warehouse for Anderson School District 5. So it's been out of commission for several, several years. Um, so back in the day, all the food deliveries would come straight here. Massive freezer, large coolers here. But now, you know, U.S. Foods, Aramark, whoever we use for whatever deliveries, they go straight to the schools now. So this building really hasn't been used in well over a decade. And so really about a year ago, Christy King Brock and Ames, she reached out to me and said, hey, we have a giant delivery of turkeys coming for Thanksgiving, but we have no space. Uh, you know, do you think you can maybe help us out? And so I just very fortunately uh, was standing beside Quentin Cavanaugh, who's our director of culinary services. So I asked him and he said, hey, funny you should ask. You know, we have this massive freezer. There's nothing in it right now. You know, we could have pallets and pallets of turkeys without issues. And so last year uh, we did that for AIM and then it kind of just, uh, I think, piqued Christie's interest and she knew that it was here. And so obviously they have a very successful food share program uh, that's expanding, but they're kind of limited out where they are in their space. So she reached out to us and if there's one thing I think people really like to see government and just organizations do is to repurpose, you know, old buildings and get more life out of them. And I think that's what you're going to see here with this program. I mean, you know, the, the, the time has passed for Anderson 5 to get a lot of great use out of this facility, but a lot of people still can really get a lot of use out of it. Uh, you know, and they're going to continue to serve a lot of people who are our students, who are maybe our faculty and staff uh, with the food share boxes. I think, you know, there's a little bit of redevelopment going on in this area. And this is so this is great. I mean, even just to having a fresh coat of paint and some, you know, new fixtures inside. I mean, I think people are very excited to see, you know, what we've got going on. Tell us, if people want to know about Food Share South Carolina, give me a little bit of background on what that agency is. Absolutely. So Food Share was started in 2015. Uh, essentially our mission when we began was that we wanted to uh, make sure that all South Carolinians had access to fresh fruits and vegetables and fresh food. Uh, so many people in our in all of South Carolina, uh, without even maybe realizing it, are facing some sort of access to uh, healthy food or even access just to food in general. A lot of our uh, landscape, though we have big cities like Greenville and Columbia and Charleston, a lot of our uh, landscape in South Carolina is very rural. And so there's all kinds of uh, access um, issues we have limited to access. It could be all kinds of barriers. It could be transportation. It could be the fact that there may not even be a grocery store up until years ago. There wasn't even a grocery store in some of our, some of our smaller counties. And so our mission was to just make sure that all South Carolinians had access uh, to fresh produce. And so we essentially created the Fresh Food Box program. Uh, it's not you know, essentially a new creation. This is something that happens all over the world. Actually, if most people are good at using Google, they'll find that there's a, a food share in Canada. And that's actually where the idea that our former executive director had uh, kind of copying their model and, and, and embellishing on it here in South Carolina. Uh, but because of the partnerships we have with uh, DSS and Healthy Bucks, which is a program that allows 
um, us to get produce um, at, a, at a really affordable rate, uh, we're able to discount heavily these fresh food boxes for people who are on SNAP and EBT. And so for those folks, our $20 box, that's the cash price, is only $5. And so they're able to receive these once every two weeks. Um, and currently at the moment, we're at 20 different counties across South Carolina where we're able to serve uh, and just really excited about uh, the continued work and our new partnership here with AIM. Uh, they're our latest hub that launched this year, and uh, we're finally doing the ribbon cutting today. I'm just really excited about what they're going to continue to do here so in Anderson. So this facility allow them to do more? Absolutely, and th this facility really opens up some doors because uh, anybody who's been to AIM can see that they are doing so much great work, and they're bursting at the seams there with that great work, and, and really their ability to use this building and the space that came from the district and the county uh, really allows them to uh, utilize the fullness of the program here. So they're not going to just be an ordering site or a uh, pickup site. They're actually going to be able to pack and distribute all the produce right here as almost a full-fledged operation, exactly like we have in Richland County. So this space gives them all of the ability to run a full-fledged food share program, uh, just similarly how we're doing in Richland County. Can you spell your name for me? Yeah, uh, spelling is A-D-R-I-A-N, Adrian, and Gonzalez is G-O-N. Z A L E Z. So, statewide coordinator. Statewide coordinator. Yep. Thank you guys. Out of Columbia. Yep. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, we're going to go ahead and begin. And uh, before we begin in prayer, and before our passport chair Ayla comes and does the welcome, I just want to say thank you uh, to everybody who is here and everybody who has uh, made this possible. Uh, many of those are listed here uh, on the sign behind me, and many, many more who played uh, some. A pivotal role in, in having this unveiling today and making this space possible. But uh, we're just grateful for each and every one of you. So on behalf of everybody from AIM, uh, we say thank you. Would you join me in prayer as we begin? Father, we thank you so much for uh, this time, uh, the, this gathering, this occasion. And uh, it's all been possible by your providence that you provide consistently for your people and the place that you have uh, uh, allowed us to serve here in Anderson. You continue to provide opportunities and open door after open door, and in this case, uh, an actual space that we can serve the people of this county uh, with more healthy foods, and we're so grateful. We thank you for everybody who's gathered and every single person who's played a part, whether it was a monetary donation, whether it was a manual labor, whether it was volunteering. God, we're, we're grateful and we're humbled. We just pray that you bless our time and our efforts as we go forward now to serve this community, and we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. I'll turn it over now to our past board chair, Ayla Chapelier, and she's going to do the welcome. Hello, everybody, and thank you all for being here. This has been um, an event that has been long in the works. A few years ago, we have looked at this opportunity, and it was not the right time. Um, but God's timing is always perfect because this came with a building and a refrigerator and sponsors and help. And we could not have done it without these people here and your support. So on behalf of the board, I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. And what an exciting day to be here, part of this great organization. Welcome. There's a lot of people who could speak on behalf of the school district, but you got me today. Uh, but very quickly, I want to thank, obviously, our superintendent, Dr. Brenda Kelly. And we also have two board members. Uh, without their help, it couldn't be possible. We got Ms. Julie Usherwood, we got Mr. Andy Patrick. Um, so about a year ago, Christy called me. Uh, we were actually in a principal's meeting. He said, hey, I have hundreds of turkeys, and I'm trying to find a place to put them. Thousands. Thousands of turkeys, yes. <laughs> he said, hey, can, can you help me? I'm like, I, sh I, I don't know. But I was very fortunate because I was standing by Mr. Quentin Cavanaugh, actually, who is our director of culinary services because I didn't know, but he knew right off the bat, hey, you know, there's actually a facility that – really is in disrepair that we don't use anymore, uh, but would fit that need great. And so there's one thing about Christy, like she will file things away. Uh, so she knows, she has like a little book on everything that you've ever told her that she can maybe come back to. And so uh, not too long back, she reached back out and said, hey, we're trying to expand our food share program, which has obviously been very successful. So, hey, you know, that facility with all those turkeys, you know, could that be a possibility? Uh, and what you walk through today is not at all what it looked like when we first came in here. Uh, so this building, it used to serve as kind of the centralized area for all the food deliveries that the district received. So back in the day, everything came here before it went out to the schools. Now, you know, U.S. Foods, Aramark or whatever, they'll deliver right to the schools. You know, all the schools have freezers and coolers now. Uh, but back then, they didn't. That's why the freezers are so large, coolers and stuff. And so, uh, you know, school district is very happy to partner. I think there's one thing that people love. It's when organizations can work together. 
Uh, this is a great example of that. This building, it, it truly it has no use anymore for Andrews School District 5, but that doesn't mean it's not useful. Uh, so now, you know, it can still serve the same community that we serve, the kids that we serve, the kids that, you know, uh, receive, you know, food and, it, you know, for at our schools, they benefit from these shoot, the food share boxes. Obviously, Christy, and, you know, they can explain uh, in a little greater detail, but this is going to continue to help the Anderson community, which is the same community that the school district serves. So we're very fortunate and very happy to partner with AIM. Uh, as you see here, these are a lot of our legacy institutions here uh, that you have represented. So again, Anderson Files is very fortunate to be part of that. And so, you know, thanks for the opportunity, Christy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Joy Tucker, and I am very blessed to be AIM's food share coordinator. Um, just like Jordan shared, I, I want to thank you all so much for joining us and helping us celebrate the opening of our AIM food share hub. And I want to first thank everyone that's played a part in making this day possible. Um, I'm not going to mention names because I know I'll end up leaving someone out, but to those that are here today that contributed time, donations, and a vision for this space, I applaud you all. Thank you so much for your hard work. I also want to welcome two very special guests that we have with us today that are here from Food Share SC. Adrian. Adrian is our network outreach coordinator and he has been with me since I began helping to build this program in February of this year. Um, Adrian has been instrumental in helping me see the vision, direction, and the organization of the program. Ome. Oh, May is our interim executive director of Food Share SC. She, along with the rest of the team in Columbia, have all been supportive, encouraging, and willing to help in any way. Um, let's all give them a welcome to Anderson Park Community. Now, I want to share a brief overview of this exciting program with you. For those that don't know about Food Share, the program was started by the University of South Carolina School of Medicine, and their mission is to increase access to, knowledge of, and consumption of vegetables and fruit through community-led projects. AIM is now one of those projects. Many communities in South Carolina do not have access or financial resources to eat healthy on a daily basis. I don't know about you, but that makes me sad. Without healthy options, health risks increase. Bringing fresh produce into our communities is a form of food equity and is a part of the Food Share mission. Currently, our AIM Hub offers a fresh food box every two weeks. The box contents change with every order and is based on providing the best variety at wholesale prices. Inside the box, you will find a variety of nine to 11 fresh fruits and vegetables and a recipe card with recipes chosen based on that week's box contents and healthy tips that let you know just how good those items are for you. A fresh food box costs $20 cash, 21 with a credit card, or if you are a SNAP recipient, that same box costs just $5. And there are no limits as to how many boxes you can purchase. Orders can be placed in person at AIM Central, online, or at pickup time at our new building. And there are no limits to how much difference this is going to make in our community and the health of everyone in Anderson County. Boxes can be purchased to be donated or purchased for someone you know. I hope you can feel the excitement that we all have in this program. It is a simple, small way that we can all work together to better the lives of our Anderson County neighbors, one box at a time. Thank you. Well, it's great to see everybody. I know I've been standing out there. I think I got a little tan on my head. <laughs> Be careful, probably should have worn a, worn a hat. Uh, I'm William Kinley. I'm the serve as the CEO at ANMED, and I want to talk from, from two points. I'll, I'll talk about uh, personally first. I learned about the, the this program uh, from my wife and one of the great things that Carol does is she does lots of things to encourage me to be to be better. Uh, some of those are exercise, uh, some of those are what I eat and, and this program was, was amazing because it's one of these things that it has multiple wins. It's like win, win, win because for every box that, that we purchase we're able to provide food for folks that may not have the, the ability to purchase it. Uh, she's also able to convince me to eat that 
broccoli or whatever it might be that I don't necessarily eat enough of. So it really helps everyone. So a wonderful program and we are just delighted personally as a family to be a small part of this and join with so many others in this community to make this happen. Now from an ANMED perspective, at ANMED we, we say better starts here and hopefully you see that around. Our branding team's doing a lot of, a lot of work to get our message about out. And what does, what does that mean? What does better starts here mean? And I would tell you, for me, what it means is we're about helping people live more healthful and more joyful lives. And, you know, that means they have to have the, we have to have the basics. Food is one of those things that is, that is a basic thing. It's hard to, to be joyful if you're hungry. It's hard to be joyful if you're hungry. So we are, we're delighted when we heard about this, what we could do to, to pitch in and help. Uh, we're fortunate to be able to do that. And we're fortunate to work with AIM in a lot of other ways and other uh, not-for-profits across our community. I had the chance last week to, uh, to be at the, the governor's mansion for an event there and, and listen to our governor speak. And one of the points that he shared was people in South Carolina and the history and how innovative people are in this state about doing things to take care of needs and to help one another and to lift people up. This is a wonderful example of that. So I could go on and on and you're saying, please don't. And that's great. I just want to thank uh, Christy, I want to thank you and AIM and everybody involved uh, and really look forward to hearing all the great stories of how this is going to help us community be better, more healthful, and more joyful. Thank you. Well, too, I want to echo, thank you for coming out today, a beautiful day um, that we have to come out and celebrate um, the food share building, our space that's going to allow us to grow this program. Um, we were first approached right in the middle of COVID when we were dispersing the ERAP money. And I think Jordan was going to kill me because he knew that as soon as they talked about it, my eyes started glistening and I'm like, oh, we can do that. We need to do that. And Jordan's like, you just committed me to disperse $11 billion and you want to do a new program? Mm. So I had to ease him into it. Over, over here. <laughs> Um, but again, as Joy said, God's timing is perfect. Um, had we jumped on that, first of all, we couldn't have. Our bandwidth was tapped out. Um, and once we got to the end of the ERAP program, we had started tiptoeing into this, but we really hadn't fully had a food share program. And once Joy and Renee, where are you, Renee? Renee is the number one, other than Joy, ambassador of food share. If you call AIM, she's probably going to ask you if you've had a food share box. That's probably the first thing she's going to say to you. Um, but um, Joy and Renee, excited about this. And so they started growing the numbers. Well, I think at one point we had 92 food share orders in the midst of providing 55 families a day with food. And if you've ever been to AIM, our little cooler is not the size of this big cooler back here. And so we couldn't bring food in from the grocery stores and have our food share boxes stored in there. It was no way. I mean, 92 was probably the cap, and it was tough. And so I'm like, Joy, Renee, shh, shh, just wait, just wait. And so, you know, it it's, hasn't been that long coming. But um, we couldn't have made this happen, first of all. We announced this opportunity at our board meeting and Carol Kinley was on uh, in that meeting. She's a board member of ours and she heard it. And that afternoon she called back and she said, William and I want to do something. We, we want to offer a challenge grant because we want y'all to get in that building. And so they offered a challenge grant and so many of you stepped up. Um, I know First Presbyterian Church did two special offerings um, one month to collect money. They also sent um, the youth group out here to paint the building. Um, Harry Geisberg has been amazing. He's actually been my ambassador in bringing folks down and not only him writing a check, but encouraging his buddies to write checks. And so many of you, and uh, Mary Ramsour, Mary, that's not your name now, but... But she used to be Mary Ramsour. Um, she has been such a cheerleader and advocate of this program and has personally supported and encouraged folks at the Foothills Community Foundation to support. And I know I'm leaving people out, but thank y'all. And, and the AU, I mean, to see this community come together for this effort. Um, AU, the lacrosse team, I know we've got some lacrosse members here. They painted this building, Sarah Ann, two or three times. Three times. 
clean it out and they put three different coats of paint on it. Um, there have been so many people involved. Um, Thorpe Plumbing came out and they, he said, no, I don't want you to pay me. I'm gonna do this for free. Hill Electric came out and checked the electrical and said, no, 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 we don't want you to pay us. We're gonna do this for free. And I know I'm leaving folks out, but it's a community effort. And that's what makes it exciting. It's not an AIM project. It's an Anderson County community project. And our goal is that we're gonna be a hub and we're gonna be able to get food to Star Iva that doesn't have a grocery store. And we're gonna get food to Williamston Pelzer. Even though they have a grocery store, we're gonna make food accessible to folks who can't afford to go to that grocery store and buy expensive produce. So at AIM, we've been addressing food insecurity for 30 plus years, Nancy's here. Long, even when we had a little cupboard at our house behind the Episcopal Church, we were still addressing food insecurity. But now we have an opportunity to address food insecurity in a healthy way. And that wouldn't be possible if it weren't for all of you. So thank you so much. If you haven't been to AIM and taken a tour, please come. If you haven't walked through this building, please do that. And if it weren't for School District 5, we wouldn't be here today. So thank you for being willing to work with us and partner, and thank all of you.